are these people? It's really funny. When I was in seventh grade, and that was a lot of years ago, I'm not going to say exactly how many, but if some people know, um, I had a relatively activist, liberal lefty teacher that taught me about what happened at Leonard Peltier. And it's something that I've kept my eye on my, my whole adulthood. And he's been in prison my entire adulthood. Mm. What do you, what do you know? You know, before, before I get into that, how, I mean, I, I don't know how much do you know about his story? You know, what I know perfect aim. I know some, uh, well, I mean, that's just me and my opinion, but you know, if, People who don't have warrants step onto your property. I thought this was America, you know, but what, what do I know? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's some alleged stuff with his son and, and him and what the FBI claim and what people who were put on the stand to lie claim. Um, but allegedly he, murdered federal agents, right? That's the alleged claim, right? Effectively. Yeah. All right. So who were on his land with no like warrant. Well, yes. So, um again, but let let's start at the at, at the beginning or let's start at the current day that on June 10th Leonard Peltier appeared FBI, before do I have to turn around now? <laughs> no, just June, stay where you are. Don't move. <laughs> on June 10th, Leonard Pelty don't appeared reach for anything. before the U.S. Parole Commission to state his case for freedom for the fourth time. His three previous parole attempts in 1993, 96, and 2009 were all denied. He hasn't even had a parole hearing in 15 years. On July 2nd, the U.S. Parole Commission denied Leonard Peltier's parole for the fourth time. At 79 years old and battling multiple serious health conditions without proper medical treatment, a Leonard Peltier most likely won't make it another 15 years for his next parole hearing, scheduled in June of 2039. Thanks, guys. But that does not mean that the fight for justice is how, over. How old will he be then? Um, He's 70... Nine. 79 so now. We'll 94. just round that to 80. So it'll be 94. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Got a 94 year old man's much too dangerous, clearly, to be walking free. Now, the NDN Collective. Ugh. Okay. Um, so Leonard actually did get recorded on a phone call that, and then I wanted to play his words um, most importantly. And let's hear from the man himself. This call is from a federal prison. Well, uh, today was a, a you know, pretty uh, depressing day for me. Uh, it was uh, literally a death sentence. Uh, I, I, there's very little chance of me surviving uh, 15 years till I'm 95 years old for I can put in parole again. I, I don't intend to give up, and I'm hoping that none of you give up. Of course, I'm very grateful for all my supporters. It's been uh, around the around the world, and so far, uh, there's been a lot of effort from around the world. People trying to get me out, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Uh, I'm going to need your help, people. I'm going to need all of you to help, uh, and I'm hoping you. Can... This call is from a federal prison. Got to go. Time's run out for me, so I got to say, Doksha. We'll keep fighting for you, Leonard. And then I'm heading into okay. I'm heading into Sundance tomorrow, so we're gonna pray for you. We get a minute. <laughs> so, speaking of of people fighting every every year on Thanksgiving, um, a ton of tribal leaders and activists have been getting around Plymouth Rock, right? And and Peltier has frequently come up. In their discussions every year so mm -hmm. keep an eye out for that um but we we've certainly covered their talks on that before um for me peltier is not i am not as well versed in it as assange clearly mm. you know i think it's important but I brought, a, I brought a couple of articles so we can we can really get into the the 
the depth of the case, at least from the perspective. I think WSWS does a pretty good job talking about this, and they actually brought a pretty good one. But yeah, let's just NDN Collective. This is who he called. So this is this is his his Mantis people, in his the supporters chat recommended a book called Spirit of Crazy Horse uh, about it, which I might I might look into. So sure. But anyway, sure. continue. Okay, so on June twenty seventh, in me. The Luzahan, uh, which is in Rapid City, South Dakota, d- days before we found out Leonard's parole decision, um, indigenous people, youth, longtime advocates, and relatives from across Turtle Island participated in the caravan and freedom rally to continue the nearly five-decade fight for justice for Leonard Peltier. It was a day that was supposed mm-hmm. to reach 95 degrees Fahrenheit, but it started with a cool, gentle rain and prayer at uh, Wombly Ska... Uh, I'm not even going to try to butcher that. Um, the caravan was led with powerful songs and steady beats from the Iron Bull drum group who sat in a flatbed towed by a white pickup to encourage our people, our relatives, and our community to join the caravan and demand the freedom of Leonard Peltier. We passed through the Lakota homes twice and the alphabet, uh, north side of Ni Luzahan, uh, before ending at the Andrew E. Bogue Federal Building in U.S. Courthouse. With 45 vehicles making up the final total of the caravan, the people parked in front of the courthouse and the rally began. Look at the size of that banner, that sign. God, how many car car lengths yeah. does that stretch? All the people holding that? That's amazing. I mean, each, each person is probably six foot. Uh, car is probably what? I don't know. Oh, that's a pretty ten, big banner. Ten feet. So that's outside long, the courthouse so easily, in Rapid City. All right. 50, 50 feet, probably. Right. When people think you know? of the Indian Wars, right, they they most likely think mm-hmm. of the clashes between the Lakota and the U.S. Cavalry or the old Westerns of cowboys and Indians in the Southwest from the 1800s. French, mm-hmm. French and Indian Wars, what I think of, but that's because uh, old, from, old history. Yeah, you got family down there. Yeah, <laughs> but, the fucking 14th century. But in um, 2024... The United All States there. still takes land from indigenous peoples, kills and incarcerates indigenous men, women, and non-binary relatives, and destroys our idea of a beautiful future. Clean air, clean water, a restored and thriving ecosystem, happy children, and a healthy relationships and health and healthy relationships in our communities. These Indian yep. wars were not shout out wars. to the water protectors. <clears throat> no. Shout out still to the water protectors. Yes. Fighting for stuff. <laughs> These Indian so, wars, quote unquote, were not wars. They were acts of state violence carried out against indigenous peoples, resisting the continued violation of treaty rights and advocating for the protection of their communities, cultural lifeways, and the land. Man, this sounds awfully familiar. Almost like it's a template for mm-hmm. somewhere else that's happening in the world. Yep. At every instance of brutal settler violence on our people, whether it was physical or structural, we had ancestors and elders who resisted it to defend our ways of life. Leonard Peltier, the American Indian Movement, the Red Power Movement, and the women in those movements are now those elders and ancestors. It wasn't until 1978, two years after the incarceration of Leonard Peltier, that the American Indian Religious Freedom Act, or ARFA, uh, or ARFA was Uh, passed in the U.S., which legalized our prayers, ceremonies, and ceremonial objects and access to our sacred sites. This was something that our elders and ancestors, including Leonard, uh, fought for. Prior to the passing of uh, of this act, ceremonies, dances, and guidance from medicine people were punishable by up to 30 days in jail and or other forms of punishment because of the 1833 Court of Indian Offenses. I mean, they don't stop. It doesn't stop. And still it doesn't stop. So as this continues, the history of wrongful imprisonment and death of indigenous people in the United States is as American as it gets. Rachel Dion Thunder, a member of the American Indian Movement and Indigenous Protectors Movement, you know, AIM is uh, is the American Indian Movement, stated at the rally which encapsulates what the American, uh, what the imprisonment of Leonard Peltier means to us. 
Quote, as long as they hold Leonard Peltier, they hold a piece of every single one of us. I can understand why. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a 97% incarceration rate in the downtown Rapid City, Pennington County Jail. We know that ever since they took Leonard, they've been trying to take all of us. Damn. Uh, Leonard Peltier has been a political prisoner, and we know that the United States incarcerated Crazy Horse. They incarcerated Sitting Bull. They were both killed. Leonard Peltier has been sitting in jail for 49 years because they want, they want the same outcome. And that's Andrew Cat Ironshell, who is the NDN Collective Action Organizer during that caravan, said that. Well, keep in mind what they're also mentioning here is the missing and murdered indig indigenous women and men who are just missing. You know? Like, yeah, that's who they're coming after as well. You know? So... You know what? Let me see if I can play. A lot of fuckery up. going on. That's weird. Um, What's happening to Leonard Peltier? Around FBI stories. It's happening to all of us. Mm -hmm. The era of suppression that Leonard Peltier belongs to was the beginning of COINTELPRO Co used by the FBI to dismantle the American Indian movement, black power movement, and civil rights movements. Today, we're dealing with the compounding effects of that suppression and retaliation from the U.S. In South Dakota, the same state where Leonard Peltier was wanted for his involvement in the Ogala, uh, Ogla, Oglala sh shootout. God, I, can't, I can't speak tonight. There have yeah, been 70... You, you, you want me to help? Hold on. Go ahead. Yeah, o Oglala. Thank you. Oglala. There have been 79 yeah. police-involved shootings statewide where 75% of the fatalities were... Go, go figure, indigenous people from 2021 to 23. Yeah. Uh, from 2001 to 23. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're talking about a 21-year stretch or 22-year stretch. 79 people involved, a police-involved shooting statewide, three-quarters of them involving fatalities of indigenous people. To this day, there have been zero convictions of those police officers, and that is not a surprise. All right. The same targeting... A police interactions extends to indigenous children in South Dakota as well. Not a surprise either, unfortunately. Just last year, South Dakota tried passing state Senate Bill SB4, which targeted children and in turn gave student resource officers more power over indigenous students within schools. Why? What does this, what does this sound like in, in, in urban environments? Right? Mm. This is socioeconomic status. This is systemic racism crap right you know keeping you oppressed and therefore you don't have the money resources to do anything on the up and up therefore you know you uh, you do what you can and therefore law will probably be looking at you much more often yes you know right. as well as their racist scumbags in and of themselves but uh, you know seen the film a hundred fucking also times systemic is... problems. As we as we heard Jesse yes. say in in Look Fat, seen this seen this film a hundred times. Um, here in Rapid City, quote: When a student didn't meet dress code, an SRO picked them up and slammed them on their head. We need charge because our children are being intimidated and criminalized in a space where safety should be a right. Our what can Wakanyaja are being treated like criminals. Our children are being treated like criminals. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, with it, which is a direct link to the school-to-prison pipeline. That also sounds very familiar. 70% of juvenile yeah. deten detainees are indigenous children, said Anissa Martin, and she's also from the Indian Action Network. The practice of violent policing and state repression has always extended to our movement spaces. During the No Dakota Access Pipeline movement in 2016, the targeting of indigenous land defenders and water protectors, as Reef mentioned earlier, was swift from U.S. law enforcement, as well as from private law enforcement hired by the oil company uh, that was running DAPL. After hundreds hmm. of arrests and injuries at Standing Rock, the immediate passing of anti-protest laws was another measure by the U.S. to suppress indigenous self-determination and freedom. 
Currently, there are 13 states, including South Dakota, that have enacted anti-protest laws, all of which carry at least a year in prison and or a $2,000 fine. And I believe you live in a state that that did it too. Fucking wild. Oh, yep. Oh, no, I know. Especially with Cop City being right near my neck of the woods. You know? I wasn't talking about was Atlanta. A Tallahassee kid. I wasn't I, talking yes, about Tortuguita was Tallahassee. So he, yeah. he, he worked at the Food Not Bombs place in 40 minutes from me. Yeah. So, you know. So, so also what's shout next? out Food Not Bombs. Oh, hell you yeah. Keith, Keith McHenry. If, you, if you're not following Keith, Keith, Keith underscore McHenry. And and Food Not Bombs Houston, I know, is doing amazing work, and they're all over the country. What a what a phenomenal yeah. organization! Um, and they get and they will ticketed. do it whether it's illegal or not, and they good get for ticketed. Them. Yeah. And, and yep. I mean, regularly, it's, fucking it's, wild. It's disgraceful that that they're treated that way for feeding the hungry. Terminal oh. late stage capitalism. So, from the end, the collective. What's next? is that the news of his parole denial is in the midst of an election year where the Democratic and Republican candidates both support the genocide of our Palestinian relatives in Gaza, a Supreme Court that's passing laws to target unsheltered people and lift protections from Mother Earth, and the investment of cop cities and prisons around the country. Wow, you just t- touched on all those. Okay. To I accommodate know. more yep. incarcerations <laughs> is overwhelming and depressing, but... It is in these movements where we must reflect on our stories as indigenous people and what our elders and ancestors have sacrificed for us to exist. It's through their sacrifices that we still have our prayers, our languages, our seeds, our non-human relations, and our medicines. They didn't give up on us, so we shouldn't give up on them. And even as... Okay, so this is an actual, like, a minute and a half speech. Uh, Even as... Leonard Peltier was told he'll remain in prison, the longest serving indigenous political prisoner in the U.S. That's unbelievable, too. Again, I've been hearing Ridiculous. this guy, hearing about this guy since I was in grade school. And I'm north of 40, let's just say. North of 45, <laughs> let's just say. <laughs> the, well, there's your problem. Yeah. Um so we're talking about, we're talking again. I've been hearing about this for more than 40 years at least. And I'm not going to date myself exactly, but you can get an idea. Mm. Oh, actually, you know what? I did, I did date, I did tell everyone because I put that thing out on July 4th, my haiku. I got to find that and put that out. That was actually kind of funny. <laughs> All right. Mm. So Leonard said that he's not intending to give up. He's hoping none of us do. We originate from powerful, spiritual, and resilient people. For every atrocity and injustice that settler colonialism has done to the world, indigenous people have defended the earth, its precious resources, and their communities. We've developed and created solutions that are in line with our original teachings and values. Values. God, that sounds like... And we continue the struggle for decolonization because we know that is the only way to truly be liberated. Everybody's got values. Yep. Even now, we're still prepared for Leonard's return. I hope so. Because, look, we were preparing for Julian Assange's return when no one was expecting it, and we got that. And You never know. That's all I'm saying is you never know. But back in the homelands of the Turtle Mountain Band of the Chippewas, where Leonard is an enrolled member, a home and proper care situation is being established so that even now, the buffalo that the U.S. tried to drive to extinction or making their way back in massive herds. And even now the Klamath people are getting land back while breaking down dams and restoring natural waterways. And even now language revitalization schools are being made available for our children. Again, I want to hear what this guy had to say as a short speech. The American Indian movement, Leonard Paltiers, and that generation made it proud for us to be proud of our language, our culture. And out of that, we were able to rebuild and begin to rebuild our indigenous nations and rebuild power. And for him to come back home to his homelands and to his movement and to his people would be profound. He's America's longest living political prisoner in American history. And he's indigenous. And that's a reflection of 
this entire country's history. It's a reflection of how throughout history the United States government has treated indigenous people. Everyone says that this election is one of the most important elections in the, you know, the, the history of our people in, in the last generation or so. Well, if the people out there want us to vote for them, they need to do an act on issues that we care about. So we will be asking mm, where we for heard the that clemency before. of Leonard Paltier. As long as they hold Leonard Paltier, they hold a piece of every single one of us. And that is why we're not going to stop until they let hey, us go home. It would mean a huge victory and a healing for our people. We want to make sure that Leonard Paltier knows that the people of Pine Ridge, that the Oglalas stand with him that the people of the Osheti Shakoi stand with him, that the people uh, of this territory in the Chesapa stand with him, that he, he is not forgotten and that his sacrifices aren't for nothing. I'm yeah. glad I played it. Um, I've, I've always wondered, and forgive me for being naive indigenous people, but the whole drum circle thing, as a drummer myself, like why? Why is there no like Neil Pert giant drum kit? Or like who is the Neil Pert of drum circling? Would love to know. You know, because I only hear like one thing from the. It's like it's great. It's a it's a great track, bro. A classic. You know, but like, it's just the one that I'm just wondering. You is know, there a, I would is like there to know. Neil, is there a Neil Pert of drumming? <laughs> Yeah, like who's doing the jazz fusion? Of I don't know. Anyway, made of drumming. That's what I want to know. For, the fight for Leonard um, and the liberation of our people from settler colonialism is not over. We will honor Leonard's words and our ancestors' actions by not giving up the fight to liberate our people. What we all can do is to advocate for his clemency by signing the petition. We continue to work to free all incarcerated relatives. Okay, uh, we continue to protect our culture, lifeways, land, and a water. And end water for future generations, just like our previous generations did for us. Somewhere, you know, this sounds like what we all should be saying. And for some reason, uh -huh. this somehow disappeared from our vernacular and our conversation. I appreciate that the indigenous people are still fighting for this and the land because it is the only, there are a few. There's Aaron Brock, like you can name the people that are fighting for clean water out there. It's it's sad as fuck, yeah. all right? As people have said during this long fight for Leonard, if it can happen to Leonard, it can happen to me. And I, again, if it happened to Julian, it can happen to, to us. And it's, it's the same thing. And so let's fight for a future where we can all be free. Okay, again, here is the World Socialist website article about it. Uh, and this really details the case of what happened and, and why he's in prison, all right? He was the leader of the American Indian movement, Leonard Peltier. He's serving two consecutive life sentences at the federal penitentiary in Leavenworth for two counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of Ronald Arthur Williams and Jack Ross Kohler, uh, federal FBI agents. The, Gotta be handy with the steel if you know what I mean, earn you keep. The agents were killed during a shootout between the FBI and AIM on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota on June 26, 1975. The denial of Peltier's parole request is a continuation of the government vendetta against the 79-year-old activist for a crime he never committed. The World Socialist yep. website denounces the Parole Commission's decision and calls on workers and youth throughout the world to demand his immediate release, which we do. The shootout at Pine Ridge was the result of U.S. government repression and law enforcement provocations against Native Americans that reached a high point in 1973 after AIM organized the occupation of the town of Wounded Knee, South Dakota. Peltier, who was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and grew up on the Turtle Mountain Indian Reservation, became active in Native American social and political causes after he moved to Seattle in 1965. He joined AIM in 1972 after he learned of factional tensions at Pine Ridge. By the time he traveled to Wounded Knee in 1975 to deliver supplies to the occupiers, he had already been framed up for attempted murder of a police officer during an AIM protest outside the federal building in Milwaukee. He was 
later acquitted of this charge. They like to frame them up. According to government reports, the two FBI agents, Williams and Kohler, were killed after pursuing a red pickup or van at high speeds onto the Pine Ridge Ranch of the Jumping Bull family where AIM members and other Indians had encamped. It turned out that the vehicle they were chasing was a white over orange Chevy Suburban with three Native Americans in it, including Leonard Peltier. So what you're saying is he fit the description? Well, not just fit the description. He was in the vehicle. Where have we heard that before? No, he was in the vehicle. The agents were driving separate unmarked cars and got out of their vehicles with guns drawn while the Suburban also stopped and the occupants got out. A gunfight involving handguns and AR-15 assault rifles ensued with Native Americans from the camp joining in. Duh. That's that's a heavy statement. I don't know what... 40, 47 fucking shooters. Government Jesus documents Christ. allege that there were 47 shooters in all, including Peltier. But, but they're sure, they're sure that it was him. The FBI maintained that after both agents sustained serious wounds... An individual who was a Native American approached and fatally shot them both at close range with a high-powered rifle. Following the shootout, Peltier and several others fled to Canada. On December 22, 1975, he was named to the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. And on February 6, 1976, he was arrested along with Frank Blackhorse by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police at the Small Boys Reserve and Small Boy Camp, Camp Hinton in Alberta, Canada. He was, Alberta. Transpo- Alberta. He was then was transported. Yep. He was then <sighs> transported to Calgary and then taken to the Ocala prison farm in, in Vancouver, British Columbia. In December 1976, so like... Almost a year later, 10 months later, he was extradited to the U.S. from Canada based on documents supplied by the FBI, which were later shown to contain false information derived from coerced testimony. Man, where have we heard this before, Julian Assange? What? So many times. Okay. So many times. He was charged with executing two agents and put on trial in Fargo, North North Dakota, not North Carolina, Fargo, North Dakota, where the, government, where the government expected a supportive jury after the FBI launched a campaign to scare Fargo residents into thinking that the aim would descend on the town during the trial and carry out a massacre. That almost sounds like oh, Chris Matthews. Betcha. That almost sounds like Chris Matthews scaring the shit out of people about them being hangings in Central Park when Bernie Sanders was about to become the nominee. It's very similar type of yep. fear monger language. SWAT teams were sent in to guard the jury 24 hours a day. Jury. Crazy. The jury conviction of Peltier on April 18, 1977, was the product of a U.S. government conspiracy. The trial included federal prosecutors hiding evidence that exonerated Peltier. The FBI threatened and coerced witnesses into lying who later recanted their testimony. The ballistics evidence that the FBI claimed linked Peltier to the crime was disrupted by experts, but this information was not disclosed during the trial. When the government's original case against Peltier fell apart after these facts came to light, it abruptly changed the charges to aiding and abetting whoever did kill the agents on the grounds that he was one of dozens of people present when the shootout occurred. And we believe that he was. But Leonard has maintained his innocence consistently over the decades. In 1999, he told CNN correspondent that I didn't kill those agents. I didn't see who killed those agents. And if I did know, I'm not telling. But I don't know, and that's the point. Peltier said he fired shots during the gun battle, but I know I didn't hit them. I know I didn't. Every legal attempt by Peltier and his attorneys to overturn his wrongful conviction has been denied by the U.S. court system. Go go figure. A previous parole request in 2009 was also denied. Meanwhile, 
campaigns for clemency from Democrat Bill Clinton in 2001 and a commuted sentence from Barack Obama in 2016 were, of course, denied just before each of them left office. Because they're fucking assholes that serve the same machine as the Republican fucking douchebags, and we're going to talk about all that later. They're no friend to anybody, but we all know that here. At every stage, a campaign by FBI agents was mounted to demand that Peltier be kept behind bars. Ridiculous. The deep state doesn't exist, Ridiculous. right, folks? Peltier will be eligible for another parole hearing in June 2026, according to a parole commission representative, although he said 2039. Responding to the decision on Tuesday, Peltier's attorney, Kevin Sharp, said in a statement, quote, Today's announcement continues the injustice of this long ordeal for Leonard Peltier. This decision is a missed opportunity for the U.S. to finally recognize the misconduct of the FBI and send a message to Indian country regarding the impacts of the federal government's actions and policies of the 1970s, which have now been well documented and released. Hoover's dead. All these agents are mostly dead or long since retired, but none of these people can get any kind of restorative justice. It's, it's beyond disgraceful. In a statement... FBI director, remember, appointed by Donald Trump because nothing changes between administrations, Christopher Wray claimed, quote, no amount of prison time will ever change the facts surrounding the murders of special agents Kohler and Williams. Um, that's right. Nothing will mm -hmm. ever change the facts. <clears throat> but yet you continue to hold this guy in prison when he didn't, you can't prove that he did the shoot. Well aware that he has been systematically denied his basic rights, Ray then went on to gaslight and assert that the political prisoner has been afforded due process time and again. Uh-huh. 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 Whatever the fuck you say. Paul O'Brien, executive director of Amnesty International USA, which had representatives at Peltier's trial in 1977 and his long campaign for his freedom, said keeping him locked up is a human rights travesty, which it is. Quote, not only are, these, are there ongoing, unresolved concerns about the fairness of his trial, he spent nearly 50 years in prison, is approaching 80, and is suffering from chronic health problems. So, that's a total good reason to keep him locked up and spending all kinds of money of the public to, to keep him imprisoned and not getting the adequate care and away from his family, right? Insane. So he also wrote a statement out that I brought with me. Um, and this was published mm. in, in workers.org. And this published yesterday morning. And I believe it was the one minute statement. But this way, um, we can hear what he had to say. Hope is a hard thing here. But I always hold hope in you, my people. Pay attention. The parole decision on July 11th may show you what injustice truly means to this nation and whom it was meant for. He meant June 11th. Living in lockdown, time has twisted into something that has nothing to do with minutes, hours, or years. They've taken what little freedom I have outside this box. Art, gone. Ceremony, gone. Yet they will never take the spirit of a sun dancer. I've never given them my integrity. I remain undestroyed. I'm counting on you if this decision does not go my way. I always need your prayers. I need you to demand that this country finally commit one act of justice. And not force him to take some shit-ass guilty plea that fucking is a half measure. Oh. Just to let him out, by the way. He says, my attorney assures me that the battle is not over until it's over. She will not back down. I'm counting on you to not back down. My time is running out here with no medical care. Thanks, Leavenworth. I do not fear death returning to Mother Earth's womb, but I do not want to die in lockdown. In my solitude, my mind often returns to Raymond Yellow Thunder. The profound tra tragedy of Raymond's murder sparked change in our people and showed them who the American Indian movement is. Raymond was a hardworking man. When he came into town to give money to his sisters, it was not enough for the Hare brothers to humiliate Raymond, strip him, and parade him around an American Legion dance. 
Raymond was shoved into the trunk of a car and died the next day. The Hare brothers were charged with second-degree manslaughter and released with no bail. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Raymond's sisters were distraught that even that small charge may not stick. The authorities would not release the autopsy report. They wouldn't allow Raymond's sisters to see his body. The sisters sought help from the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the BIA, the tribal government and private attorneys. In desperation, they turned to the American Indian movement. AIM members are spirit warriors, not merciless savages. We organized 200 carloads of people and demanded justice. With dignity, we demanded justice. Sheriff's deputies, state troopers, and FBI agents agreed that serious charges should be filed against the Hares and that the local police chief should be dismissed. Indigenous people started holding their heads up after that victory. They started speaking out against abuses by the BIA and tribal government and white ranchers profiting off their land. We must not allow Raymond's fate yep. to befall others. He says, again, this is Leonard Peltier in a letter to his tribe my mother, published yesterday. My mother used to ask with dismay, why is it so bad to be Indian? I find myself wondering why they hate us so. We will triumph over the misguided hate of others. Never, ever forget who you are. We are the first people. Mother Earth herself fires the blood that runs through our veins. Protect each other. Protect Mother Earth for future generations and stand with oppressed peoples everywhere. Remember that true strength does not reside in holding power over others. Strength comes from living out of a place of humility and integrity, inspiring others to find their unique strengths. Oppression is rising, running like black mold through every facet of society. We must stand together and let society know that indigenous lives are not cheap. The lives of our oppressed brothers and sisters are not cheap. All people are worthy of basic human dignity. Colonialism has all but destroyed us. We must do nothing less than transform society into a place where human beings are not disposable. If you do not weep, if I'm not granted parole, cry freedom. Coalesce yourselves, galvanize your relationships, establish alliances. In, not, in the power of, of our people, we find strength. Hold your head up high. It's not over until it's over. In the spirit of Crazy Horse, Doksha Leonard Peltier. Shit, man. Mm-hmm. 80-year-old man. 80 years old. Why? Right to yeah. jail. Right away. Yeah, KYE so fucked up and sadistic. It's... Yeah. Uh, it is beautiful. I'm, I'm glad we brought it. <clears throat> you know, um, I'm not sure how many people are even going to read that. You know, at least on a stream, and I'm glad that that at least we did. Um, yeah, yeah, a little heavy. Sorry, uh, I know that Misty has been incredibly vocal about keeping the pressure on, and she was organizing even during the assign the, the final weeks of of before Julian was released, organizing phone call campaigns and postcard campaigns to try to drum up more support and uh, you know to try to petition to grant parole and it's mm. it it doesn't make any sense like we live in in such a weird world like you know you know the accord <laughs> lord just dropped just 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 dropped some some cash on there and want to give a shout out and a thank you to everyone else who's done that and uh if you want to join that that group if you're able to we really appreciate it there's some ways to do that there cash dot app slash dollar sign indie news network or just the dollar sign indie news network on your phone patreon paypal rumble jack jacqueline jack is back on patreon this week she had some kind of thing with her credit card got hacked we can't stand when that happens i'm so sorry we're glad to have you yeah. back thank you rumble.com slash c slash indie news network i-n-d-i-e 